Good morning, everyone. It's Sunday morning, 3rd of December. I hope you're having a good day so far this weekend. You know, sometimes God reveals to people before they die that they are going to die. We all are going to die. Christ doesn't come back first, but sometimes God reveals beforehand to a person that their death is imminent. I've shared with this audience before that when I was three years old I had a brother, his name was Gary, and I had an older brother, Dale. It was Dale, Gary and Larry in order. Dale was the oldest, Gary was next, and I was the youngest at that time. Now I'm the oldest in the family because Gary and Dale are then I was the youngest and my brother Gary who was four years old had pneumonia and he'd been in the hospital been very sick and he'd come home from the hospital and this particular evening he jumped up on my dad's lap and said dad I have something to tell you and my dad said what do you have to tell me and he says I'm gonna go home to be with Jesus tonight my dad says, now Gary, you, you, you got home from the hospital, you're doing a lot better, you're going to be fine. And My brother Gary stopped my dad and he says, no. He said, um, I have to tell you this, I'm going to go be with Jesus tonight. Well, he died that night. Well, in this particular, particular chapter, chapter 20 of Acts, Paul is revealing to all the people that he preached to that he was going to be go home to be with Jesus. They didn't want to hear it, but in the 25th verse he says, Now behold, I know that all, ye all among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God shall see my face no more. He told them, you're not going to see me anymore. In other words, I'm going to die and um, later on in the chapter says that um, verse 37 they all wept sore and fell on Paul's neck and kissed him sorrowing, <coughs> sorrowing most of all for the words which he spake that they should see his face no more and they accompanied him unto the ship. Well, you know, we all have our times of parting from our families. And sometimes it can be a very sad time. You know, I've lost both my mother and father. My wife's lost her father. And most of all of my relatives have passed on as far as my uncles and aunts. They're all gone now. And so it's inevitable that if Christ doesn't come back first, we're going to all die. It's appointed unto man once to die, and after this the judgment, the Bible says. And so, what do we do with the remainder of the life that we have? This month I'll be 70 years old. It seems impossible. <laughs> it seems like just yesterday I was getting my driver's license to drive at 16 years old, and now I'm 70. It's like a friend of mine has said. He calls me up. His name is Walt Stickle, and he'll say, Larry, I'm on the caboose. He's now 80 years old says, Larry, I'm on the caboose. I'm not on the engine anymore. I'm on the caboose. <laughs> well, we're going to read through this 20th chapter of Acts. You know, even though it was getting down to the end of Paul's life, he was very, very busy. And after the uproar was ceased, Paul called unto him the disciples and embraced them and departed to go into Macedonia. And after he had gone over those parts and had given them much exhortation, he came into Greece.
and there abode three months. And when the Jews laid wait for him as he was about to sail into Syria, he proposed to return into Macedonia, and there accompanied him into Asia, Sopater of Berea, and of the Thessalonians, Aristarchus, and Secondus, and Gaius of Derby, and Timotheus, and of Asia, Tychus, and Trophimus. These going before tarried for us at Troas. And we sailed before away from Philippi after the days of unleavened bread, and came unto them to the Troas in five days, and we abode seven days. And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech unto midnight. And there were many lights in the upper chamber where they were gathered together, and there set in a window a certain young man named Eutychus being fallen into a deep sleep and as Paul was long preaching he sunk down with sleep and fell down from the third loft and was taken up dead and Paul went down and fell on him and embracing him said trouble not yourselves for his life is in him when he therefore was come up again and had broken bread and eaten and talked a long while even till break of day so he departed they brought the young man alive and there was not a little comforted and we went before to ship and sailed into Asos there attending to take him Paul for he had appointed minding himself to go afoot and when he met with us at Asos we took him in and came to Middling and we sailed thence and came the next day over against Chios and the next day we arrived at Samos and tarried at Tragalium, and the next day we came to Miletus. For Paul had determined to sail by Ephesus, because he would not spend the time in Asia, for he hasted, if it were possible for him to be at Jerusalem the day of Pentecost. And from Miletus he sent to Ephesus, and called the elders of the church. And when they were come to him, he said unto them, Ye know from the first day that I came into Asia, after what manner I have been with you all seasons serving the Lord with humility of mind and with many tears and temptations which befell me by the lying and weight of the Jews and how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you but have showed you and have taught you publicly from house to house testifying both to the Jews and also the Greeks repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ and now behold, I go bound in the Spirit into Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there, save that the Holy Ghost witnesses in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. But none of these things move me, neither I count my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy, and the ministry which I received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. And now, behold, I know that ye all, among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God, shall see my face no more. Wherefore, I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men, for I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. And also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn every one night and day with tears. But now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all of them which are sanctified. I have coveted no man's silver or gold or apparel. Yea, ye yourselves know that these hands have ministered unto my necessities, and to know that were with me. I have showed you all things, how that so laboring you ought to support the weak, and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said it is more blessed to give than to receive. And when he had thus spoken, he kneeled down and prayed with them all. They all wept sore and fell on Paul's neck, neck and kissed him. Sorrowing most of all for the words which he spake, that they should see his face no more, and they accompanied him unto the ship.
Well, <clears throat> like I said earlier, we all have um, a time to depart from this world and in this particular um, 20th chapter of Acts it's re Paul reveals to the people that they would not see him anymore that his time was at hand and I'm sure that you know after all of his labors after all of his different journeys all of his trips to different places after all of his contention with the Jews after everything he'd been through I'm sure he was looking forward to going to the next life and you know I've been through quite a bit myself and I just want to report to everyone that you know we never know when our time has come to an end you know many people around me and my center of influence have passed on and we're not assured of another day and I'll be honest with you I'm looking forward to the next life as well after all the you know things that I've had to go through in this life it, it's going to be a great a great time when God calls me home most unworthy as I am to be a recipient of eternal life. May the good Lord be with you this day is my prayer. God bless.